On today's episode of You Asked, what's the best plasma TV replacement? Cheap OLED versus high-end LCD, the best cheap TV for movie watching, and what do I think of the new Sharp TV? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is You Asked, wherein I answer the questions that you asked in hopes of helping you and others with similar questions. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing the exact same clothes as the last episode, it's because I'm filming episode seven and eight here back to back. And while I could very easily go change my shirt and try to fool you into thinking this is a recently recorded video, I would rather be transparent and explain that I'll be taking next week off. So if you feel like your questions didn't get noticed or that I'm maybe not answering questions about one of the hottest topics of the week, that's why. Anyway, we've got a pretty great list of evergreen questions and a few special ones this week, so let's dig in. Kevin Maple writes, I have a Pioneer 60-inch 1080p Kuro Plasma that in many cases outperforms my two-year-old Sony 4K. I struggle if I should replace it. The viewing angle and black levels are better than my Sony, and it looks fabulous and probably better with sports broadcasts that for reasons you addressed are still either 720p, 1080i, or 1080p. It has HDMI, but not the latest, and performs well with my Apple TV. What's really to gain by dumping what is about a 14 to 15 year old TV, a dumb TV, for a newer $3,000 plus option? Budget's not the roadblock. I just really don't see newer TVs with broadcast TV and sport bringing any benefit, and in the case of Viewing angle LED seems to lose. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading what was written. I guess I would gain with Netflix 4K shows, but the old Pioneer does a great job with compressed video. So Kevin, I'm curious about what your Sony 4K TV is, but since you mentioned that the Kuro's black levels and viewing angle are superior, I'm gonna venture a guess that it's an LCD based TV. And if that's the case, yeah, I understand being reluctant to replace the Kuro with an LCD TV. That's why I would suggest looking at OLED TVs, which have measurably superior black levels and off-angle viewing to your Kuro. And I suspect that if you were to buy a TV size similarly to the Kuro, 65 inches would be the way to go, unless you want to size down, then you would notice that the OLED looks better in almost every way save one. That would be slow, slow panning shots on movies. That's where OLED can have a sort of flashing effect because its pixels are so instantaneously fast that the movement of light from one pixel to the next can be kind of jarring. Check out my video titled Plasma vs. OLED 2023. I'll toss a link to that uh, video down in the description and see what you think from watching that. If you have more questions after watching that video, please write again. But also, I would suggest a 65 inch Sony A95K if you can get your hands on one that is going to be superior to your Kuro in just about every single way. Continuing along that same theme, Danielle Amandolini writes, I own a 2016 Vizio M50. Some of the backlight zones have failed and there's a darker area on the screen, safe to say. I'm ready for an upgrade. Other than your channel, I also check ratings reviews and most TVs these days seem to suffer from motion issues when displaying 24p content. I am a cinephile and a filmmaker myself and I want a TV that shines in showing 24p content. Everything else is secondary. I'm not asking for a specific model. I would like to stay in the five to $600 range for a 50 or 55 inch panel, but rather something to guide me in finding TVs that do well in that specific area. What should I look for? How can I identify that specific strength or weakness in TVs? The showcase content at department stores is so misleading. Furthermore, ratings seems to highlight how TVs with faster response time, which is most of them these days, especially struggle with 24p content. Content. Ironically, it seems like watching movies and shows has become a niche niche use case for TVs and I'm lost. So uh, Danielle, I feel your pain. First thing I wanna say is that just about any TV I recommend to you is going to outperform your Vizio M50. We've come a long way since then. And I would say that if you didn't notice, especially poor 24P performance on your Vizio, then you aren't going to feel like you're taking a huge step back with one of the much better performing TVs today. For a 55 inch at around $600, I would suggest you look at Sony's X80K. That's a 2022 TV with very good motion processing. Or for a more dazzling overall picture, I would suggest the Hisense U7K. The problem with displaying film content today is that the very fast response time of today's LCD TVs and the instant response time 
of today's OLED TVs makes very slow pans and films show the slowness of the frame rate in a way that many of us aren't used to. You might think that faster acting pixels would be a desirable attribute, and for many things they are, but what happens in a slow pan is that the image is moving slowly and it's happening at a very slow frame rate. So every time a pixel activates from dark to bright, you see that activation and it appears as a sort of flash or flicker. You can address this some by using motion smoothing, but if you use too much, then you lose the cadence of the film and it doesn't look like film. It looks like a soap opera. One of the reasons I like Sony TVs for motion processing is that you can implement just a touch of motion smoothing and get rid of any undesirable effects while the movie still looks like a movie. I hope that helps. Next up, Houston Lamb asks, from a cost versus picture quality perspective, are there situations in which you would recommend a cheaper OLED TV like the LG B series over a high-end LCD TV? Um, you know what? No, not anymore. A few years ago, yes. Uh, the perfect blacks of OLED just could not be approached by LCD TVs back then, even the high-end models. And that perfect black yielded amazing contrast. So even though the OLED TV's processing might not have been as good as, say, a high-end Sony LCD TV, the delta in black level performance between OLED and LCD, again, back then, was big enough that I would have opted for OLED. But today, many high-end LCD TVs are getting very close to OLED black levels. And so the better image processing in those high-end LCD TVs ends up being the tipping point for me. Right now, I might buy something like the Samsung QN90C over an entry-level OLED. Okay, next one. And you know what? I can't really answer this, but well, I just have to share because it's all like connected, man. Uh, at to me liaison or tome liaison 3480, who knows? My Samsung 8500 plasma just died. Should I go with the LG C2, C3, or the TCL QM8? Dude, mine too. That plasma versus OLED 2023 video that I just mentioned earlier, that F8500 plasma just died like a week and a half ago or so. And I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but there was a tiny flame, a poof of smoke, and the main board was fried. This, after the TV just went black, even though you could still hear audio. Does any of that sound familiar? I'm super curious, so uh, please write in to you asked at digitaltrends.com and let me know. And once we get chatting, maybe we can dial in which TV you should get because as I mentioned in my previous You Asked episode, I need more info than you gave me. Okay, most popular question this last week had to do with the new Sharp Aquos XLED Mini LED TV and if I'm going to review it and what I think about it. So to three of you that wrote in about that, thank you for asking. I know you represent more folks that are wondering the same thing. So I'm, this is a little embarrassing to admit, but I lost track of what was going on with Sharp back in, 2018, 2019, uh, I have been until very recently, and I mean like very recently, unaware that Sharp itself owned its brand name and IP again. So at first when folks were like, there's a new Sharp TV out, what do you think? What, are you gonna review it? My internal dialogue was, yeah, no, probably not. I'm already reviewing Hisense TVs. See, sometimes internal dialogue, Caleb, can be a little arrogant, snarky. Sometimes, don't light me up in the comments, please. But for those of you who don't know what the heck I'm talking about, here's the backstory. Sharp, like all Japan-based TV makers, was on the struggle bus back in 2014, 2015. I suspect that the horrendous earthquake and tsunami that struck Japan in 2011 had tremendous economic impacts that had ripple effects, pardon the pun, seriously, but I mean, the impacts were felt hard much later after the event. Meanwhile, South Korean companies like Samsung and LG and Chinese companies like Hisense and TCL were surging in popularity. Again, pun not intended. Anyway, Toshiba and JVC ended up getting bought out and uh, they just licensed their names out. Panasonic withdrew from the US market entirely and Sharp sold licensing rights to Hisense for US TV production. Uh, that was in 2015. So from like 2015 to 2018 or so, if you bought a Sharp TV, you were buying a Hisense TV. Now, although Sharp sold the licensing and manufacturing capacity that it had in North America to Hisense, Sharp continued to be Sharp. Foxconn bought Sharp and is the parent company. But Sharp, to some degree, 
was still the Sharp we knew from back when it made some of the best TVs you could buy. Well, in 2019, and this is where I lost track of the story, Sharp bought its name and all its rights back from Hisense, and it has been plotting a comeback ever since. I missed that, full stop. It was buried in some industry gazette and I missed it. Then the global pandemic and busy, 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 here we are today. I didn't know that new TV y'all have been asking about was actually made by Sharp. Holy crap, I am super embarrassed. I feel like I should have known that, please forgive me. So yeah, I gotta see this TV now and I'll be seeing it at the Value Electronics TV shootout, which by the way is the contest at which Sharp was the only transmissive display, i.e. non-plasma or non-OLED ever to win the King of TV Awards. So I guess there's reason to be hopeful for Sharp after all. Anyway, I have no relationship with Sharp right now, so I best rekindle one. And yeah, I guess there's another TV coming in for review a little bit later. I'm pretty excited about that though. It could be great and I'm gonna check it out for sure. This could be huge or it could be a big letdown, but I'm, I'm gonna stay optimistic. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Like, subscribe, comment, please. I wanna talk to you down in the comment section. Send your questions to you asked at digitaltrends.com. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.